Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Ushanka Show, stories about life in the Soviet Union. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи, в эфире программа Ushanka Show. Recently I made a couple of videos about Soviet music bands and once again we didn't call them rock bands, we called them vocalna instrumentalny ensemble, vocal and instrumental ensemble. And if you missed those videos, link will be below in the comment section. And I had a question from Betty Swanhall, <laughs> 3310, were there native guitar makers in the Soviet Union or were the instruments Western imports? So today we're going to talk about Soviet guitars. Surprisingly, Soviet centrally planned economy had some room for production of acoustic as well as electric guitars. There were four factories in the Soviet Union that manufactured acoustic guitars and the prices were the cheapest guitar 20 rubles, the most expensive quality guitar was 50 rubles, and just a reminder, average salary in the Soviet Union was about 150 rubles in the early 1980s, so you could afford three decent quality acoustic guitars for your monthly salary of engineer. But the most desirable acoustic guitar came from Czechoslovakia. The brand was Cremona and would set you back 70 rubles, so 50% of your monthly salary. Playing the acoustic guitar and singing alone was very popular among the Soviet teenagers. I knew a couple of friends of mine that were really actually good at playing guitar. And you do it at the parties or if you go camping, there always will be a great thing to do is uh, sing songs with acoustic guitars around the campfire. My cousin Alexander from my mother's side was really good playing guitar and actually he inspired me to uh, get a guitar when my parents bought the guitar. But since I was lefty, I just couldn't uh, go past the initial uh, training stage. He was um, helping me and the way you start playing acoustic guitar, <laughs> you start to learn a uh, Kuznetic melody. Besides that tune, I couldn't learn anything and we just abandoned my guitar. And then I resold it later when one of my friends saw <laughs> my little brother messing with it. And he's like, dude, sell me this guitar. Why are you breaking it? So we got rid of it for 10 rubles like in 1985 or something. And then sometimes in 1970s, several Soviet factories began manufacturing electric guitars. And I found an interesting description of the sound of the Soviet guitars. In this case, it was about Ural, Ural brand. The sound of the guitar is exactly the same as in the first Soviet rock bands. Soviet instruments have their own sound. This applies not only to guitars, but especially to synthesizers. A musical instrument made in the USSR has its own unique charm, somewhat broken, lax, and at the same time sounding magical and beautiful. You can't even achieve this sound on purpose. Western instruments sound too correct, competent and clear. Because of this, we get academically correct sound, correct noises, everything is just like in a textbook. So the Soviet era electric guitars were just like vintage British or Italian cars, somewhat broken, lax, and at the same time sounding magical and beautiful. <laughs> Okay, so we will start with the most popular, well, let me correct that, the most produced electric guitar in the Soviet Union called Ural 650. Ural 650. Yep, another Ural. We have Ural Mountains, Ural Trucks, and of course Ural Motorcycles. Some Soviet era musicians joked that the Ural guitar was born after Ural Truck and Ural Motorcycle had a one night stand. Mostly because it was so heavy. But look-wise, that guitar didn't look too bad, right? 
That's because the original Ural guitar design was stolen, I apologize, I prefer to say it was inspired by Yamaha SGV300 electric guitar from Japan. They just made that Soviet guitar looks like a mirror reflection of Yamaha. Ural electric guitar was produced between 1975 and 1998 and they made over 200,000 units. Unfortunately, quantity doesn't always mean quality and there is a reason why Soviet musicians called Ural electric guitars Lapata, the shovel, because it was heavy and awkward to handle. But what would you expect from the factory that originally manufactured furniture? that at some point was told to manufacture furniture with the keyboard and that's how they started making pianos also called Ural, the Ural. Guitars were made on the same equipment that was used to manufacture furniture as well as pianos and they used furniture grade lumber so instead of maple they used beech wood for the necks and pine plywood for the main body. When one Soviet musician got frustrated with the quality of strings, he actually took it apart, removed the wrapping, and he discovered that they used piano strings on their electric guitars. Another fun fact, the electronics came from a different factory which also had nothing to do with music, they were part of the defense industry. But despite the fact that these guitars were extremely heavy, awkward to handle, had a poor quality, crappy sound, still they were extremely hard to find in retail, they were so-called deficit as well. And the price tag was 185 rubles, a lot of money. The situation reminds me of Russian saying Na bizrybie irak ryba, when there is no fish, crawfish is the fish. So when there is no electric guitars, poor quality Soviet guitar is the best electric guitar. And no wonder that shortly after the collapse of the Soviet Union back in 1991, uh, this factory went back into manufacturing furniture and by 1998 they ceased production of electric guitars. And now let's take a look at some other electric guitars manufactured in the Soviet Union. So once again this is Ural 650 item 422, the guitar we were talking about. Besides Sverdlov furniture factory, Ural guitars were also manufactured in Rostov, Argenikidze and Barisa factories and a total amount was over 200,000. This is another Ural 650 guitar, this is model 422R, slightly different look, same bad sound. Now this one cracked me up, so once again this is Ural 650 item 422, but it's the limited edition, manufactured in 1977 to mark 60 years since the Great October Revolution. This guitar was called Elgava Unica II Item 412R and it was manufactured in Moscow at the Experimental Factory of Musical Instruments. Electric Guitar Admiral. This electric guitar is considered the best that Soviet industry ever produced. It was manufactured from 1984. Electric Guitar Tonica, one of the first electric guitars made in the Soviet Union. They were made in Leningrad and the first guitar was manufactured in 1967 and they were making them for about five years. Another electric guitar manufactured in Leningrad, it was called Accord and its design was inspired by Italian guitars from a company called Echo. Budget electric guitar called Musa Solo, it was manufactured in the late 1980s and it was one of the cheapest and modern looking Soviet electric guitars. Another Tonica electric guitar, but this one was a slightly different design, so it's called item number 405. And this one was manufactured at four different factories in Rostov and Don, Argenikidze, Sverdlovsk, and as well as Leningrad. Electric guitar with a beautiful name Aelita. By design, it really looks similar to original Ural electric guitar. And this one was manufactured in Rostov and Don and Argenikidze. Electric guitar Stella. This one was considered the lightest, most ergonomic electric guitar in the Soviet Union. Unfortunately, Electronics was a total crap, so that was a complete fiasco. Solo 2 Farmanta Item 241 BL, one of the most popular Soviet electric guitars. It was manufactured for about 10 years from mid 70s to the mid 80s. Really cool design, which it looks very similar to Japanese Kawaii and Jet King. Krunk Ani, extremely rare model of electric guitar manufactured in Armenia in the early 1970s. There's only one guitar is known of this design. Krunk Double Neck is the only double neck electric guitar made in Soviet Union. 
It was manufactured in Armenia once again in Yerevan Musical Factory. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the different models of electric guitars made in the Soviet Union. And once again, when you buy Soviet electric guitar, it's pretty much when you buy a house that had TLC in description that requires tender love and care. So you buy a project, you need to take it apart, you need to change the strings, you need to change ergonomics, maybe change the neck, and then maybe you'll get somewhat decent sound. Okay, my friends, if you like this video, please don't forget to write a comment and tell me about it, just like Viktor Tsoi doing on this photo. Otherwise, thanks again for watching Oshanka's show. I appreciate your likes, I appreciate your support through YouTube subscription and Patreon, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания, goodbye. Современники поет Лидия Батезату, солистка молдавского молодежного ансамбля «Контемпоран».